Hi, and welcome it's to really the- great being here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the first episode of our podcast. Today we have two special guests, Eric and Noda. Hi. Who are you, Eric, and what do you do? <laughs> Hi, I'm Eric, and I am actually John's ex-teacher. Former teacher. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it sounds weird with an ex. Former teacher. <laughs> and Noda, who are you and what do you do? Hi, my name is Noda. My name is also Amy and I am a content creator. I do many things. You come to find out more if you listen to the podcast. Can you That's see me? <coughs> That's I want to update you today. Oh. This is interesting. I'm not sure. You're He's not like, sure. He's, um, I, I, I'll probably see him again, mm. but I don't think he's like long term. What's going on? Potential partner. Is this is this the same girl that you you talked to me about before? Um, the buff guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's him. <laughs> and the thing is, like, I think what did I tell you? What did I tell you? Like. He was like, oh, I don't want to be creepy or something in that one. Yes. Yeah, he was like, I don't want to be creepy, but you're really pretty. That sort of thing. And I told him, like, don't say that. As in, don't say that I don't want to be creepy. If you want to give a compliment, then do it confidently. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I met up with him yesterday. Right, I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> finally. Ready, ready. Mate, we already started. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Shall we <laughs> Shall we do that again? Mate, uh, we're, we're still continuing. Let's go. Okay. We can just do the intro later. But, yeah. So, wait, so... Same uh, self-depreciating guy, right? Yes. So... Except he stopped doing that now. Oh, has he now? Was that from your suggestion or... Like, what you told him? Mm. I don't remember. <laughs> oh my days. But he stopped, well, he he did do it a little bit. When we met up, he was like, oh, I'm losing my hair. And I've got a receding hairline. I was like, this is not attractive. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, I've got a really small bladder and like, I need to pee a lot. Small bladder? Like, That's yeah. really interesting <laughs> points to make on a first date, but you know. Yeah. I was like, it's fine. Like he was like, oh, I don't want to drink that much water because I need to go to the toilet. And I was like, yeah, duh. Obviously, like drinking water equals going to the toilet. I was like, that's good. You can go to the toilet more. It's fine. Like it's not gonna bother me. He's like, yeah, but I've got really like small bladder. <laughs> that's such a just go to the toilet. If you need to go to the toilet, just go to the toilet. You know, you don't yeah, to... it's like good for you. Yeah, my what the hell? Those are not like yeah. first date points that you want to put across. <laughs> Maybe I'm just so comfortable to be around that maybe people are just like... Maybe. Oh, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, then he, and then he messaged me like straight after when I went home. He was like, oh, I had a really nice day. Can we do this again soon? I'm sorry I mentioned about my bladder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It's, he's not... I don't think he's a potential partner for life kind of guy. Well, sorry, buff guy with small bladder. <laughs> He's quite hot, though. I felt, I felt, I felt his muscles. Oh. I was, like, I was like, oh, I just want to... <laughs> he was kind of baiting me to do it because he was standing there, like, flexing his calves. Of I was course like, he okay. was. And then he was, like, flexing. I was like, you know what? I'll just give it a squeeze. All right. So squeeze, he squeezed his bicep and he squeezed his boob. <laughs> he mean, squeezed pecs. his boob? Oh, yeah. no. I do like pecs. You do like right, he has nice. very small. She's got bladder. really nice. She was like, oh, I was like, oh, all right. Never felt pecs like this before. <laughs> Eric, have you have you ever felt pecs like that before? Um, yes, yes, I may have. <laughs> are we? Are we allowed? I, I, are you allowed to mention <laughs> what pecs that you felt? And I, I, I totally feel uh, Noda, Amy. Um, I <laughs> can. Relate, one hundred percent. But yeah, 
Well, I a lady does not tell, so... <laughs> a lady does not tell. Divulge. Let's just, uh, let's just say uh, I hear you. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So. But I, I, I would say I'm probably not so much of a chest kind of guy. I'm more of a arms. Mm. Yeah, cuddles. Cuddles. Yeah. Yeah. They are the best. Yeah, I'm not so... Uh, I'm, obviously, I appreciate the effort that some people put on their body or put into their bodies. Um, but no, I'm more of a, a cuddle kind of guy, whether you're small, huge, or averagely proportioned. Cuddles are cuddle, isn't it? Cuddles yeah. are cuddles. But cuddling someone really slim compared to cuddling someone who's like broad, it's a different feel. It is that, yeah. Yeah, there is that as well. Like, I've had several partners, because I'm quite like a slim person. Every time someone cuddles me, they always say how it's uncomfortable because of how <laughs> much you can feel the bones <laughs> in my body. <laughs> One specific bone or <laughs> not? No. <laughs> or any the bone. bone. The bones on my chest or my shoulder. Okay. They always say how it's very uncomfortable, and they always have to put a pillow. But, oh. Yeah. But you can't change that because it's genetics, unless you don't. Yeah. Unless I like take bulk crazy. up. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Right. So, in terms of how to speak to women, Noda, mm -hmm. what kind of suggestions do you have? <clears throat> Don't over apologize. That doesn't show any confidence. It's better to like say how you feel and then deal with the consequences after. Mm. Because if you're like, oh, I'm really sorry, or I hope don't, I hope I don't mind, hope you don't mind, or like, oh, I'm sorry I said that. It's like you, you're saying one thing, but then you're apologizing so much that it just doesn't. It's not very like strong message. Hmm, I see what you mean. You 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 come across very uncertain, and that's not nice. Have you ever had that like happen to you? Is that from like experience? Yeah. People just over apologizing for no reason to try and like seek reassurance. I think mm. it's because they're like super anxious, so they'll apologize in case they said something wrong, even though I didn't indicate to them it's wrong or anything at all. But then they're like, "Oh, oh, sorry, you know, is it too much? Is it, you know, is it okay?" And then for me, that feels like they're trying to seek reassurance from me mm. to make them feel better, ultimately. And that can be quite exhausting if you're in a relationship with them. So it kind of puts you off straight away. Yeah. I mean, I remember doing that as a kid as well. I mean, I I don't recognize myself if I have st or still do it to this day, but mm. I have, I am starting to just be blunt with what I say and just say, yeah. oh, you look pretty without yeah. apologizing or whatever. Yeah. What about you, Eric? Have you, have, do you have any advice for uh, how to speak to a potential partner? Um, well, if you're approaching women from a friend kind of non -expect expectant kind of way, where you just want to speak to people, um, I would avoid just saying just really, um, what do you call this? Really boring way to ask people like, Hey, how are you? Yeah. Oh, like small uh, talk kind of stuff. Yeah, like small talk kind of ways. I would, well, I, no, I mean small talk is okay, but common small small talk questions are a bit boring, and that's not really. I agree. It's not really setting you up for for being friends, and not also if you want something more. Like it's it's not a good first impression. So, um, coming from a uh, a, fr a friend's kind of position, I'd say like ask them what have what um how should they been today? What have you been up to after the initial hello and how are you type of kind of question? I don't know. Do you find it really weird 
when somebody asks you how are you or yeah where i just the... get bored immediately <laughs> yeah well, what... i don't want to talk to you anymore which one is it's weirder like... if they ask you how you are or how's your day been which one is less uh, i prefer the how's your day been because i've got more to talk about yeah i think and so. it shows yeah. that they've made effort but if they're like oh how are you or like hope you have a good day or like i don't know it's just like okay cool like make be specific in a way or, or the classic british question of um uh how's the weather today? top of the morning you know? like are you are you enjoying this sunshine <laughs> that's like uh, yeah that's why i'm out <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, next question please <laughs> so i i would say Ask them an open question about their day. Um, if if something really dramatic happened, like I don't know, um, uh, maybe when King Charles was coronated. Not that I'm a monarchist or anything <laughs> like that, but because I did. Did you watch this coronation today, or wh what were you up to uh, celebrating or not celebrating King Charles today? Just be topical and not be generic i would say no. do you know how i talk to people go on i don't ask a question i just talk about myself oh. <laughs> <laughs> let me give you an example I you know, that. <laughs> let me give you an example like i was it was uh years ago in university and i was waiting outside the lecture hall and there was someone else there never spoken to them before and i just went up to them and i was like hi I have conjunctivitis in my right eye. And that was it. And we had a friendship for like three and a half years after that. Wow. Because it was just a random fact about me. Really mm. random. They can't run away because they're outside the <laughs> room. You trap so, them. So like, you trap them. And then you just start talking about like really random topics rather than, like, oh, so uh, are you waiting for this uh, lecture? Let's yeah, go. obviously, because yeah. I'm standing outside. <laughs> So I thought, let's just try a different sort of opening. Mm. And usually it's just like, I would make a statement. I would look at them and I'll make a statement about myself or like what we're doing in that environment. Mm. So I don't even ask a question. <laughs> oh, here's another one that, um, cause growing up, I've had this, I don't know, like I've always really been like me I've not really put on a, a, a facade or like a, a front, but, um, when I was at uni as well, people would assume that I'm straight or, and, but, but women, girls in general would be friendly, but not friendly as in like, you're definitely gay. Let me go and like, just be safe with you. <laughs> but just, just as a kind of, um, I guess, normal, normal interactions with people. Um, what I found really I know, maybe, maybe it's just like in my head, maybe I'd like to think of it this way, but um, I thought that some girls thought that I was pretty interesting to, to be with when I asked them something really random about what they've got, like to show that you're paying attention to them. So I know when I was in uni, um, uh, one, of, one of my friends, one of my girl who were friends, uh, or girls who are friends, no, friends who are girls, they had these little keychains on their bags and I, we hadn't really known each other for a long time maybe like two or three weeks into uni and then i just noticed that that they have this keychain i think it was a um, one of those hello kitty characters like not hello kitty mm. themselves but like one of the obscure hello kitty friends yeah. like mm. one of the black frogs or something if you're if you are familiar with hello kitty and i just said oh, that's a cool keychain um isn't that from hello kitty or yeah or like even if you didn't know what it was you can just say that's an interesting frog looking keychain it just makes you look like as if you're paying attention not in a creepy way mm. um but it it makes you appear that that you are You've got attention to detail without being. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say that's another thing. I agree. I have to speak to women, <laughs> or just like just be attentive. Yeah, but not Notice not in the a, not an objective 
objectifying way. That's like, oh, I really like the shape of your chin today. <laughs> that would be really weird, John. What? what? <laughs> why, why are you aiming that at me? Yeah. Um, and for guys, my nose. Um, do I find it more difficult to talk to guys who I'm attracted to, or just random people? Yeah. Would no, you say? I, would you say that there is a? The would you say there's same a difference thing. between women and uh, men in terms of like how to talk to them? But for me or not a? For yourself. Um, it depends. It depends what situation I'm in, like what environment I'm in. Like if I'm in a bar, which I don't really frequent, or pubs, and I know it's like a gay pub, so I know it's like safe, mm. to, like hit on people. <laughs> um, I would. Hmm. You know, I'm trying to remember when the last time I did something like this. Um. No, I think my approach would be the same. I'd pick something really random, like what Noda started, and just talk about it, like try to talk about it. Like, so if I'm wear if if the guy that I found attractive is wearing this shirt, I would say, oh, that's that's a pretty cool pixelated um, trainer design. Are you mad for trainers? And it just gets them to talk about something that. They uh, they might have just literally bought something like this from the shelf and not really paying attention to what it was, but at least it gives them something to, to, to start a story with rather than, uh, how was your day today? How was your day at work today? Yeah, so boring. Like, oh, oh, having a good night. Yeah, you're out oh. Thursday night, isn't it? Isn't it like a school night tonight? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I would say that. Um, but if I were in a club. Oof. Probably a bit inebriated and drunk. I don't know. I don't know what will happen there. I'd say I'll probably a little bit more CD. <laughs> nice chest. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst touching it. Yeah. Like, Whilst mm. touching his pecs. Nice. Ooh, yeah. is, uh, somebody <laughs> works out today. <laughs> On that note, have you guys had any like embarrassing clubbing stories? Oh my god, I, I don't feel like I can answer this because <laughs> it's been probably 10 years since I last went to a club. 10 years? Has it been 10 years? 10, 6 years, something like that. Um, and I probably have forgotten all of them. Either they're so traumatic that I've forgotten about them <laughs> or I'm pretty boring at clubs. I mean... Did you say traumatic experience at clubs? Like embarrassing, because I've I've had one very embarrassing moment where I took a girl to, um, it's a club called K Events and it's in it is in Vauxhall, London. Oh, Vauxhall, where all dreams are made. Yeah, and uh, we we all had like several bottles of soju, and if you don't know what soju is, it's like Korean, it's like Korean vodka. But it's in like a very small box. Yeah, rice wine. Yeah, rice wine. Rice wine. But um, they all have like different flavors to them, and so you can barely taste out like alcohol, and it's like. I've had a peach one before. I'd say it's quite addictive. Grape one for me. Yeah, grape. Grape and apple is quite nice. But um, basically, we had several bottles of soju, and we reached. Uh, the club, but we we're not allowed to bring like outside alcohol into the club. So I had the smart idea of just downing one bottle within like five minutes, and uh, I, I was feeling fine and everything. We were in the queue for a bit. Got and I I was like busting for a piss. So like mm-hmm. by the time we reached there, I like sprinted over to the toilet. Did my piss, went out for a bit, and met up with the with the girl that I I brought there, and then I just felt like utter shit, and my stomach started turning, and then I just went, oh. <laughs> not over her, thank God, 
but I went to the closest bin and then just puked all over that bin. Luckily, I wasn't kicked out. But yeah, that was a very embarrassing moment of my life. Very sexy. Yeah, I'm so, so attractive. (laughs) And did you feel good after? Or did you just feel bad? Oh, yeah. I mean, it definitely felt better after puking. (laughs) (laughs) After puking that bottle of soju out. Yeah. And then, yeah, that night was just interesting. I don't know. I don't think I've had any embarrassing stories. I did vom before going to the club because I drank too much. That's one time. But I don't think I've had anything like super embarrassing. Actually, wait, no, I remember one thing. I I wouldn't say it's embarrassing, but. I remember like being really drunk and asking a guy for his number, mm. and he gave me a fake number, but I didn't realize in the moment because I was drunk. So mm. I was like, "Oh, what should I?" No, first of all, my chat up line is always, "Can you take a picture of me and my friend?" Mm. Oh, and then no. that gets the conversation talking. And then later, I was like, oh, "Can I have your number?" He was like, "Yeah, it's o seven one one two two three three four nice. four." And I was like writing it down. I didn't realize it. Until like afterwards, I was like, that's a fake number. <laughs> I was like, damn. And I was just writing it down, like, really, really happy. I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like, oh. <laughs> so, oh, so what? You didn't get his number in the end then? No. Damn. So, yeah, that's all right though. Oh. He was probably just like not drunk and just like laughing at me being drunk. And... But yeah, it gave me a bit of courage to ask for his number, I guess. Yeah, I think uh, you just got to try, isn't it? You just yeah. uh, see how it goes. And and I think if, it, if, you're, if you're wanting to speak to people, uh, you, not that, I don't want you to, I don't, not you as in like you, John, but I don't, I don't want people to, to assume that it's, assume the worst, but I always would prepare. It's just maybe because I'm a bit, neurotic anyway i would always prepare a graceful exit you want to expand on that so yeah if so let's take note this example that you know this man this person was giving her a a wrong number and uh, what would you have done nada if you had known as he was given it, or just after he gave it to you, and he was still there, that he gave you a wrong number. What, 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 what did you do, or what did he just like disappear into the night? And that was like you realized he just carried on dancing and just did ten minutes thing. later. Yeah, did yeah. you? Re- when did you realize that it was it was gone? Like it, not it was gone. It was um, a mm, fake number. Probably like when I sobered up a bit more and I had a look at the number. I was like, this doesn't make sense. So oh, I was okay. like already too late to find him again. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was already too late, but. By that time, you kind of like whatever. Just, you already know, like they're not interested if they're doing that. Mm. Okay. So, if if you had realized as soon as he gave you the number, what would you have done? I'm like, it's a fake number. <laughs> I'm just like, this is a fake number. Would you? And then I like... probably think about. No, I'm not like super clingy like that. But I'll just put. Pre- I'll just accept it. And be like, okay, not interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so, think that's it. Yeah. That's it. Like that. That would be. Um... Because some people would have probably like freaked out and go, "What? This is not real. This can't be it." Mm. Yeah, um, like you reprimand them for it. Yeah, and that that would not mm. be that, that would be <coughs> setting the wrong tone. Um. So I, uh, yeah, I would say prepare to get rejected. Like that was quite a a sly way to reject people. Yeah, I've seen like rude, but a, a very passive way yeah. to to reject somebody but if they were outright going to reject you i'd think of like graceful exit before mm. i considered going to them so if it, if it were a guy mm. at a pub and then they say now nah, mate go away i'll be like mm, fair one see you later um and not be caught up in the moment of being rejected and mm. having a negative reaction mm. so like like would you say it's like immediate acceptance? Uh, outwardly, yeah. Mm. Outwardly, you have to present as if it was like, 
help next um and then maybe inwardly yeah inwardly <laughs> when you get to when you get to the corner of the club you're, you're just like, like <laughs> on a fetal position it's like <laughs> <laughs> that's it i'm going home yeah so you just can't show it to the person oh because you never know who's watching mm. yeah it's true and then just cry it out at home on the bus <laughs> Dunk, drunk another bottle of soju to drown their dick. <laughs> now when it comes to actually finding a partner do you guys i'm do you guys go out a lot to like meet people or do you take the more non-traditional route and go online and go on apps and like tinder or hinge or bumble I feel like I do a bit of both because I spend a lot of my time online as well. Mm. But I also love going out. So like I feel like I'm in a good position to meet someone because I generally look for opportunities anyway or like I'll try and do something that I enjoy and those places will hopefully have someone that enjoys things that I enjoy. Mm. It's like I naturally just go out and, you know, do my hobbies or go out for dinner or whatever. And then you just get natural connections from there. Mm. And then online, I guess it's more like friends or friends or yeah, through Twitch or something like that, which is maybe, yeah, dif different. And you, Eric? Um, for introverts functionally introverts like me functional introvert like me i think apps definitely help mm, because yeah i would say that as well you can filter out people who you're interested in or um what i started to do a couple of like months ago that i stopped now <laughs> was normally people have uh, preferences right and then when you go on these apps you you kind of stick to your preferences but now oh not now um well actually yeah not now i would it sounds really sad if you're this if you're one of those people that i ended up hooking up <laughs> take off hooking up but now i just would select i i don't know like it'll be like a, a lottery of what uh, a different thing, a different preference, a different, so a different one from my usual preference. I would go for for someone like that uh, on odd occasions because you have the choice on these apps. So now and again, there's like not for me, there's not like a consistent way to to choose. Like, let's say um, I would only choose um, there's a stereotype among people, girl, uh, boys and girls, that people tend to like tall people. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's say I was those I was one of those people and I would say, yeah, I only would date people above six foot, six feet. And then on a random day, I would go, actually, hmm, uh, I'm going to go today with somebody who's like five, seven. Yeah, so that's what that 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 was my uh, preference. Oh, that was my my routine. But it's it's hard for like introvert people to to talk to people on um outside in real life. I agree. <laughs> but, but just wait for an, an extrovert to adopt the style. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would I I think there's a huge thing about what Nodda said. Like you've got to do something that you like even if you're an introvert or an extrovert, doesn't matter what you like. You have to do something that you enjoy and then be out there make sure that the law of numbers there's this thing about law of numbers you play the game like it's so unlikely that you'll win the lottery but if you don't ever play the lottery you'll never win the lottery mm. so you've got to be you've got to present yourself <coughs> opportunities. Um, whether that's i don't know if you like bookish people like people who like books go to bookstores go to um find the see if you're favorite author is having like a book signing and turn up to those events even if you have no 
money to buy their book and have it signed or wait four hours to join the queue to have it signed but just being there will hopefully uh, either you notice somebody that you would be brave enough to speak to or somebody will notice you that they will be brave enough to speak to but none of that will happen if you're not at that location mm. yeah i remember yeah. <clears throat> um when i was in university uh at the height of my nerdiness um we would go to comic-con which was actually this weekend is comic-con yeah mm. oh, yes and you would just like turn up to comic-con and there would be house parties after or like hotel flat parties that you would have heard of from people talking around along the way and then i think you just got to be like really weird and say uh you got any space for one <laughs> seizing that opportunity yeah yeah because you never know you'll never know who's going to be there what type of people will be there and if it really is not something for you then you just got to like leave mm. um i i really to be honest i i like anime and manga when i was growing up but i was never really that extrovert enough to um go into like this huge comic-con type on my own and i literally just got dragged along with friends but if i didn't have those friends that i met from from universities actually the first these first group of friends that i had were from um, um online it was like a forum board back in the days before reddit became a thing and we would just meet up like um, a bunch of like socially awkward anime weebs um, would would go and have ramen together and go to random shops like Forbidden Planet, Orbital, and all those nerdy places. Not really speaking that much to each other, but just like being around each other. Mm -hmm. And not for me, like I didn't really get on with anybody like romantically, but I knew of people who started their mm -hmm. their beautiful relationships because they were part of that group mm. so you gotta just be out there and do it consistently enough um and present yourself to the universe mm. i do have to agree with seizing the opportunity kind of thing because <clears throat> the the current girl that i'm seeing um we met through uh like an acting job and we were all extras yeah. Like, everyone was all over the place in, like, South Bank or something. And it was a night shoot. And when I first met, when I first saw this person, I was like, wow, she's gorgeous. It's like, I have to talk to her. But if you are me, I can't talk to anyone. And I have, like, massive social anxiety. So, oh. like, I tend, to, I tend to keep up to myself in, like, jobs with mm. massive crowds. And then... I had to like build up the courage and like work myself up and like roughly at the end of the shoot I was like hey do you wanna I was like seizing the opportunity because like it was either now or I'm just never gonna see this person mm -hmm. ever again so I was like hey do you wanna go out on a date sometime like next week and she was like sure why not and like at that moment I was like 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 I said before it was like either now or never and I was like, mm. I got nothing to lose if I if I get rejected. I was just like, I'll just go home and cry. And it was like, mm. but it's now what several months now, and I'm I'm still here and still living my best life. Yeah. So definitely yeah. like seize the opportunity when it comes up, because you never know. Like, you could either get something great happen or. It just you just continue to move on. Yeah, that's just how life is. Do you want to plug anything? Um, your content. Where can they find you, Noda? You can find me on Nodamochi, N O D A M O C H W I W E, and I'm going to be releasing a new YouTube channel under my real name in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to be talking about my new flat and what it's like living solo in london and what do you have to plug eric um 
Well, I said, already said it in the podcast, so let me do it again. Um, if you're listening to this before the 10th of June, um, we ha- I play in an orchestra called the London Video Game Orchestra. Um, we're going to be playing music from games that have LGBT characters in it. So if you're down in London, um, go on our website, lvgo.co.uk, to find out more about details, uh, more details about how you can get tickets. Um, I'm Eric, and you can also find me on socials. Um, I have an Instagram page called Eric Does Digital, and a YouTube page of the same name. Um, it's on huge under construction, but I don't have the energy right now because I'm in the middle of like doing my masters. So I will get to it at some point, but I will plug it again in future episodes of this podcast. All right, what do I have to plug? Uh, I'm on Instagram at John Acario, J-O-N-A-C-A-R-I-O. Uh, this podcast will also be on... Well, the video podcast, at least, will be on Add Oil Productions on YouTube. So that's A-D-D, Oil, O-I-L, and then Productions, P-O-P-R-O-D-U-C-T-I-O-N-S. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, you can you can find this podcast on all all uh, podcasting platforms, so Spotify, our podcast, and wherever else you listen to your podcasts. Awesome! Thank Bye. You so much. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>